This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated. There are two different times where I have had something clever to say, and I remember them fondly. Uh, the, the second time that I said something clever is a story I shared with you already. That's when I was out walking by the river and this car slowed down and they were asking me what I was doing out so late at night and I, I had this uh, sneaking suspicion that they were going to jump me and that I was going to get into a fight and that's not going to go well because I've never been in a fight. And so I tried to figure out something clever to say. Uh, so if you recall, if you remember this story, I invited them to church. I said, my name is Pastor Aaron, and I'd like to invite you to church. So that's the second clever thing I said. The, the first time I said something clever, I was probably 21 or 22. I don't think on my feet so quickly sometimes. I don't always have a great response to people uh, when they're trying to corner me. Uh, but I was rather proud of this first time. So I'm 21, 22. And uh, to become a pastor, you have to go through this candidacy, candidacy process. And you go before different committees to answer questions, all these sorts of things. Well, this uh, was the first time I had to go in front of a committee. Uh, and don't worry, this was not the Northwestern Minnesota Synod. It was another synod in a far, far, far place called Minneapolis. Um, so anyway, this is, a lot, this is a long time ago, too, so I, I'm, it's safe to share this story. So anyway, I'm sitting down, there's four or five people asking me all these questions, and for the most part, they're reasonably friendly, but there was one individual, one pastor in particular, that was really giving me the business. And at one point, he said, you know, nothing bad has ever happened to you. How do you expect to be a pastor? How do you expect to relate to people? And basically said, you know what, you've had too good of a life. And then uh, at one point, I was getting really frustrated with all of this. He was just kind of berating me. Then at one point, he said, well, I bet you can even walk on water. And I said, and this is where my smart aleckiness came out. I'm normally not smart, alecky, smart alecky at all, but for whatever reason, I felt compelled uh, to say this because uh, I was frustrated. I said, well, actually, I can walk on water. And he just was speechless at that point. Steam is coming out of his ears. And the rest of the people in the group were kind of like, well, I want to see how this turns out. And I'm thinking to myself, I shouldn't have said that. I'm risking my future here. Uh, and I said, yeah, I can walk on water. I love to go ice fishing. And that is just a different form of water, isn't it? I can walk on lakes when it's frozen. And the guy was just sort of dumbfounded. And everybody in the room just busted out laughing. I found out years later that nobody really appreciated this person in these interviews because he was always really hard on the candidates and they were thankful for that. So that's in my first time I said something clever. I'm, I'm thinking in another 10 to 20 years I'll come up with another clever thing uh, to say on down the road. Well today in our gospel lesson Jesus has a very clever response to a group of people that were try, trying to corner him. So we've had a number of Sundays in a row where our Bible readings are about Jesus getting cornered by people who don't like him. Uh, this week, two groups of people team up against him, people who like the government and people who are against the government. They're trying to make him slip up or say something that they can use against him. 
Kind of sounds like what politicians do in this day and age. Uh, these guys uh, who gang up on Jesus are really, really smart. They try to butter him up, and they say this. I mean, they are masters at buttering him up. Jesus, we have heard that you are really wise and knowing, and that you are a great teacher, and that you are really sincere, and you are a really snappy dresser, and you don't have bad breath, and, well, they don't, they don't go into that at all. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. But you get the picture. These guys are using flattery before they hit Jesus with their question. They want to loosen him up, and then they have this sort of gotcha question. So anyway, Jesus, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Now, this may not seem like a trick question to us, but it was a trick question for Jewish people living in the Roman Empire. The emperor Caesar called himself a god. Paying taxes was a form of worshiping Caesar, so the Jewish people living in the Roman Empire had issues with that, especially since our God said, you shall have no other gods before me. What is Jesus supposed to say? If he says it's good to pay taxes, all the media would call him an emperor worshiper. If he says it is bad to pay taxes, all the media would say he is committing treason and breaking the law. Jesus can't win. He's backed into a corner. But Jesus is pretty smart and doesn't get ruffled. Whenever he is told to choose between options A or B, he always finds an option C. He calmly told the questioners to bring him a coin. And he said this, whose image is on the coin? And whose name? They said Caesar's. And Jesus said, Then give to Caesar the things that belong to him, and give to God the things that belong to God. And everyone was amazed. What a clever response. What belongs to Caesar? Well, money. What belongs to God? What belongs to God? Everything. Everything. Everything in the world belongs to God because God made everything. So if everything belongs to God, then that includes money and Caesar as well because everything belongs to God. A rather clever response. Jesus found a way to agree both with the pro-government people and the pro-God people and still be true to what he believed. That is absolute gen genius. Jesus said, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. A coin had Caesar's image on it, but we all have God's image stamped on us. We all belong to God. We are God's creation. It says in Genesis that God created us in God's image. We are all creations of God. We all belong to God. Everything in the world belongs to God. And this is incredible news, good news for us. So we're going through this capital campaign called United in Joy, where we're working to raise funds to be able to refinance our church mortgage and to be able to get a better rate to free up some cash flow. And we're following a program from Capital Campaign Services of the ELCA. And on this day, it's scheduled for me to talk about stewardship and why giving is important. And I have to tell you, I really struggled with that. I've given many different stewardship sermons through the years, and I wanted this one to be a little bit different. So I was really working hard trying to figure out why, what to say about giving. And then I wrote up a bunch of stuff, and, and I, I felt like it wasn't that good. Uh, and then uh, Mary and I and Paul, we took a trip up to Canada uh, on Friday. We went Friday uh, night just to spend the night up in Canada, and we wanted to go to the Assiniboine Zoo, which is a great zoo. If you've never been there, go and check it out. They have polar bears. It's the coolest thing ever. And this was kind of an early birthday present for Paul as well. He'll be turning six on November 2nd. So I'm driving north, and I'm thinking about what I wrote 
uh, in, on my stewardship server, and I just thought, this isn't good. I, I just don't like it. Uh, then I make it through the border, and I'm driving along on 75 north to Winnipeg, uh, where the zoo is at, and I see a big billboard. And the billboard says, be grateful. Be grateful. And then I started to think about why I give in relation to this whole notion of gratitude. I give to my church and to other organizations because, number one, everything belongs to God, including myself, including you. We all belong to God. Everything in the world belongs to God. And so I give because everything belongs to God, and I want to give back to God because I am grateful. I am grateful for all that God has given us. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for every breath that goes in and out of me. That, those are all gifts from God. And on our trip, I was thinking about all of the different things that I'm grateful for. I was grateful for the polar bears that we saw and how those are God's creation. It was the coolest thing. We got to walk through this glass sort of uh, enclosure and you could watch the polar bears swim around you. To think about how those polar bears are creations of God. I'm grateful that I could watch the cubs lose with my son. What a gift to be able to sit and watch the cubs lose with my son. Okay, they lost, but in the grand scheme, does that really matter? Because I'm alive. I have a son that I can watch the cubs with. I'm grateful for breathing in the air in the morning. I'm grateful for being able to see a sunset. I'm grateful that I can enjoy being with my family. I'm grateful for being able to enjoy a donut or enjoy a hamburger, enjoy the people around me. I'm grateful that I can have maple syrup on my pancakes with the syrup I just bought in Canada. I'm grateful for fresh coffee in the morning, for laughing with my, with my wife, for laughing with my son, for laughing with all of you. I'm grateful for the different cultures of the world. I'm grateful that I'm able to go out into the world and go fishing. I'm grateful that I'm able to go out into the world to go hunting. Deer opener is just right around the corner. I'm grateful for rainbows. I got to see a rainbow in Chicago uh, when I was traveling back just a, a few weeks ago. And on our way back from Canada, we took a, a picture of a beautiful rainbow that was stretched across the sky. And it was a reminder to me that everything in the world has been created by God. So why do I give? Why do I give to the church and to other organizations? I give because I am a creation of God. I give out of gratitude for everything around me. It's an absolute privilege and honor to be on this earth, to walk side by side with all of you, and to think about how everything belongs to God. And so we are called to give back to God what we have been given uh, through, our, through our offerings of time, of talent, and treasure. So that's why I give. I give because everything belongs to God, and I am grateful for that. I am grateful for the image of God that has been stamped upon me. I'm grateful for the image of God that has been stamped on you as well. And so I give out of gratitude for having that image of God stamped onto me and onto you, and in gratitude for my life as well. Everything belongs to God. You belong to God. Everything in the world belongs to God. And that is good news. Amen.